Yeah, Coach, any um, updates uh, on uh, Elijah and Coach Ted? Yeah, they're both back. And um, what are some of the issues um, uh, when, you know, you face a, a, a run-heavy team that the run yeah. defense has got to be? Absolutely. And then you got to be ready for the play. Action. Sure. Yeah, it's a good football team. Um, I got a lot of respect for their staff and especially the way they play up front. You know, it's a really good offensive line. Um, it's going across the board. And then uh, they do a really good job. They lead the league in time of possession. They're number one rushing team in the league. Going against Brissett a few times. Saw him in Indy. Saw him last year down in Miami. Uh, you know, we practiced with him. Um, really good player, other than the fact that he went to NC State. Um, but he is a really good player. He's hard to bring down. He's got a big arm. Smart. They do a really good job. They're going to throw a lot of things at you shifts, motions, and they're going to try to grind you down. And uh, we got to be we got to be ready to go, especially in the run defense. You got to tackle well. You know, the, the arm tackles are not going to bring Chubb down. Um, like I said, we got to be, be able to grind this game, and it's it's going to be a heavyweight fight. How much do you pay attention to the weather this week? Just with the yeah, possibility? Yeah, certainly uh, we don't anticipate that affecting us on Sunday uh, inside. I mean, it could if, obviously, the weather – it is to get nasty, but uh, practice, yeah. Obviously, you're aware of it in case you got to make contingency plans for practice. You said uh, the other day that Tiki was playing well, but playing well subtly. How do you see him doing that, and, and what kind of shows you that he's yeah. doing well? Like from the outside looking in, I mean, we all Yeah, know. it's just the, the way uh, the, good there. I want some other things popping up there tonight, so make sure you got your. Uh, Stuff all, all set there. Okay. All right. So, back to TQ. Um, really just fundamentally, the way he's taken on blocks, the little things, the technique things that, that matter in the run game, not getting turned, not guessing. That's going to come down to you know, leverage, fundamentals, being able to play the combination blocks. He's doing that really well. And then I, he, he had a couple pressures the other day that will show up on the stat sheet as pretty as a sack, but he can affect the quarterback too. He's taking a step in – in the obvious rush situations. Um, so just please with how he's, where he's trending. He uh, leads you with quarterback hits, though. Is that one of the things you're Absolutely. Saying? But it's sometimes it's not just the, the hit. It's just not necessarily the hit mm -hmm. you led. All right. Yeah. That's um, not okay. It's not just the hit sometimes. It's, it's the pressure in the pocket that don't, doesn't even show up. If the quarterback can't set his feet and he's getting pushed or moves him off a spot, you know, maybe through a bull, as he's going through there, and obviously you do see the hits. He had two two big hits uh, on Gino on Sunday. This is maybe this is maybe looking ahead a little bit, but when you have like when you're an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, you mm -hmm. face the same guy over and over again. How does that change things? Like like for, because obviously you're a former offensive lineman yourself. Like yeah. How does that change things when you're facing that same guy eight, nine, ten times in a career? Uh, it's, uh, in a career. Yeah. yeah, I mean, those are really good battles. I mean, when just thinking back at Tennessee, some of the matchups, you know, you guys would have with J.J. Watt, and those are the games within the games. You know, in certain years he may be favoring a certain side, and then they do different things with them, and guys, different guys, you know, that's those are the chess matches, you know, where they affect and uh, what what the rush plan is. Uh, certainly guys get really familiar. They know their go-to moves, but you still got to stop them, and then – there's a, there's a healthy respect, and you hear the stories back in the day, just listening, remember Russ Grimm, Telling me about Randy White, you know, those battles that the that he would have with them. And you do there's a familiar area. Munchak told me a lot of the battles they would have with the the old AFC uh Central and different players. Um so yeah, there is. Uh, obviously we don't play the Browns every year, but you, if you had to be in the division, you're gonna have to play Miles Garrett a bunch, you would have very a lot of familiarity. You got a lot of familiarity with Jack Conklin, but I'm not playing. And uh you see it Week, uh, week in and week out with the division. What, what's the, when you do, like as a coach, does it change some of what you do a little bit? Or? Maybe, you know, they're going to adapt on that side. It's because it worked last time. I mean, there's certain things you may try, but they're pretty smart on the other side too. And you got to always anticipate they're going to adapt. They're going to do something different. They'll see something different from Cleveland. Uh, and certainly they'll see something different from us. But that's, those are the adjustments you need to make in between series. And obviously that's our job. To anticipate that they're not going to change is is an absurd amount of arrogance. You mentioned Miles Garrett. How many 
How do you prep this week with considering the situation he's he's in now? First, you're, you're you know it has nothing with football. You're just glad that, that he's okay. You know, it kind of brings you back to what's important in life. And so I don't know Miles personally. I got a lot of respect for him. Um, but when you see that around the league, obviously it happens, you know, every day in every major city. But it does hit home when you see it. You're like, well, I mean, that's glad he, he and uh, the passenger were able to at least walk away. I mean, but the extent is that's, that's, that's real life. Um, I think when you're planning for a football game, you got to plan for everything. But what matters is real life. And I'm glad he was able to walk away. What kind of challenges does Jacoby Brissett present for you guys? Yeah, strong arm, very smart player. It's hard to bring down. I mean, the first guys, it's kind of like the theme of their team. We don't wrap up and uh, tackle well. He can extend plays even when you get to him. Very strong in the pocket. Uh, got a lot of experience. He played a lot of big games. I think it was DP who was talking after the game on Sunday, and he made the comment that the offensive line was really feeling themselves. And he was like, when you have guys who are saying, like, let's run this, let's run this, it means something. Is that something that has almost a ripple effect into another game down the, when you're looking at this game coming up? Different challenge. I mean, certainly you try to build consistency, um, certainly can build confidence, but there's a new challenge every week. Um, just because you, you know, you played well the week before, I mean, that's what has – Everybody in here knows that's what's going to be humbling about this league. If you don't continue to improve or adjust, you'll be humbled fast. And, uh, yeah, Cleveland will be ready to go up front, different scheme. You like to see that during the flow of a game. Yeah, it excites you as a coach. doesn't mean it's going to be like that on Sunday if we don't go in there and put the work in and understand what we're going against and try to try to improve. Following that up, you've been trying to instill an attitude or start with the offensive line since you got here. Are you pleased – what's happened this year or how they developed to this point? Absolutely. But we understand that doesn't, you know, kind of follow up what you toward is asking. Like, that doesn't get, guarantee us anything on Sunday. But, yeah, we certainly feel like we're trending in the right direction. But once you start stacking some of those games, uh, not saying anybody gets surprised, but they'll be they'll be on high alert. And that's what I, I feel like Sunday. It's going to be a heavyweight fight. It's, uh, you know, it's a very physical team and a really physical line. And, uh We'd like to think we're that way ourselves, but we got to go over there and battle on Saturday, Sunday and prove it. Is there anything different that you're seeing in that unit this year that maybe you didn't see last year at all? Well, I mean, every year, I mean, you're talking about guys that are a year older, more familiar. I thought certainly towards the end of last year, there was a lot of growth. You could see things going to start paying off, and it's nice to see that so far. Um, yeah, I just feel like we're way more in sync. As, as, as an offense, but that, that happens a lot when you're going through a pretty dramatic change. And then we still we had a lot of turnovers, a lot of new guys that weren't here last year. We had a lot of new guys last year that hadn't been there the year before. And so um, certainly, Jeff, feel like we're turning the right direction, but it's uh, we got a lot of football left. Can confidence and momentum for an offensive line be something that can be really built on? Well, I think confidence is as you continue to, to work and build and you get better at, at something, yeah. But uh, momentum, it's hard to say momentum goes week to week. That's probably a better way to put it. You know, ball's kicked off, you know, it's a different challenge. But certainly you can build confidence in what you're doing, but also have the humility to understand that there's really good players on the other side. And if you're not – you don't put the work in week in and week out, whether it's preparation off the field or, or the work on the field, it can, uh, it can get ugly for you quick. Dangerous question, but is momentum one of the bigger fallacies in the NFL? You think? I, look, I, everybody's got different opinions. Like, and I respect everybody's opinion. I, I just, I wouldn't call it that. I'm not going to yeah. sit there and no, say I, I know I, it's a yeah. fallacy uh, to use a word, but uh, I certainly have just my experience of seeing week to week what happens. All of a sudden, if you think you got to figure it out. Coach, I just uh, you're talking about the trends of the offensive line. How is the rest of the team trending? You know, you play three games. Are you seeing the growth that you want to see, not only with the team but with the coaching staff? Yeah, but again, it's like a lot of things in life. Don't ever get too comfortable. You skip steps. You don't. You, all of a sudden, you think you got something figured out, and you think that you can cheat the cheat a process here or there. Um, he said it. It'll be humbling for you. So. Long enough, you want to you want to have success. You want to sustain it. it. Sometimes it can be pretty mundane, but you got to put the work in.
Coach, the last two times the Falcons played the North, the FC North, they were went 0 and 4. You weren't around for all that joy. But um, what's the brand of ball that they play? You know, between the Baltimore, Cleveland, old school. You know, we talked a little bit about that's the old school central. Right. Minus Kit, well, Houston getting Kit. Well, I think you've had some consistency up there. So you know, things things turn over so quick in this league. But I think when you're looking at Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they've had a lot of consistency with staffs and the way they built that thing from the personnel, uh, even from Ozzie to pass down to, to Costa and Harbaugh's been there a long time and the coordinators have been there. I know Mike McDonald's new there, but he'd been there before and they kind of know what they're looking for and they have a certain brand and they're pretty good year in and year out. Uh, Pittsburgh, you'd argue the same thing. They've had a little bit of change on the, some of the coordinators, but Mike's been there a long time. They've won a lot of games. There's a certain style and brand that uh, going back to Chuck Knoll, to Bill Cower, a lot of great coaches come through there. What Mike Tomlin's done, it's pretty damn impressive. So there is a consistency, you know what you're getting. Obviously Cincinnati, um, Zach and, and those guys have been there a couple of years. They obviously, you know, their year three last year was pretty damn good for them. Um, but, you know, that, that's probably and Kevin and, and his staff in Cleveland, um, they've got an identity. They know who they are. Um, it, it is fly ironic how that things get passed on, no matter who's been there. But that certain brand of football, maybe it's because it's in, the weather is nasty and they play outside, and you know you're not going to be all pretty throwing the ball 65 times if it's that lake effect. It's in Cleveland late in the year. Maybe that has something to do with it, or the old Three Rivers, or Pittsburgh, or the weather. Maybe I don't know. That'd be my guess. But it, it is a good brand of football. There's been some really good consistency in that division, and uh, looking forward to the challenge and. Glad we're playing them. Oh, uh, I was just yeah. uh, we only get uh, you know little three to five minute slices of Cordero's personality, but it's always memorable and uh, engaging to talk to. What what's he like just on the team in the meeting room? What does he bring in addition to everything on the field? In terms of like a reality star that you see, uh, he could be. I guess. He could be. <laughs> uh, just personality. Personality. Like what are you looking for I mean, here? You know, he speaks his mind with us. Uh, I just wonder what what he brings in addition to obviously you know other nice players. Uh, you know, enjoy working with CP. A smart football player. Um, you know, everybody's different. You, know, you embrace everybody's different personalities. Uh, again, I, I don't know. I don't see what he does for you for those two to three minutes. So I can't really have to make a comparison. But uh, I enjoy working with him. Pretty consistent guy. Uh, I'm glad I get to coach him. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't want to. I don't know his character. Obviously, we only spent such limited time. But it seems like he has a ton of confidence. He speaks his mind. He spoke after the game about. You know, speaking in front of the team and, and the, you know, uh, that kind of leadership role. I just wonder if that's something that, that he brings to this team maybe that we don't see. I think it's consistency. Um, guys know they can depend on him in tough moments. I think that's how he's earned the respect of your teammates. Uh, there's no, like, rah-rah speech that's going to change anybody, you know. Uh, we embrace um, you know, my policies. I, I try to develop good relationships. I... Uh, you know, listen to our players. Um, you know, no problem with anybody ever asked me why. You know, I got conviction. Like, it's not a authoritative, you know, regime in there. So, um, we have a pretty consistent approach and a lot of good guys in the locker room and leadership comes in a lot of things. There's a lot of mythology that you hear because you do hit those two to three snippets. You look around the league and internally, whether it's other coaches or players, we all kind of know the truth and you kind of chuckle because you, you guys get one brand that I call it people that kind of live through their avatar. You know, it's good. It's good for them. You make a lot of money doing it. But there's a lot of coaches and players that guys, if you really internally polled them, they'd say, yeah, you guys aren't getting the real version. And um, I just see it a lot. You know, guys hear one one speech and they think, oh, man, this guy's a leader. And then you go in the locker room, they're like, man, nobody's listening to that guy. Put on a good show for you. I do not feel that with any guys here. And that's why I enjoy what they say because it's real. And we don't sit there and publicize it. I don't try to be a reality star, have a, a camera follow and do, you know, a confessional off the side with Bassity for uh, clicks and likes. Try to be really good at my job, try to do it the right way, and we got a lot of guys that try to do the same thing. Coach, outside of Chubb, what about their other weapons in Najoku, Amari, yeah. Kareem? Hunt, yeah, so, yeah, really good skilled guys. Amari, uh, really good route runner, really polished, really smart player. Knows how to find the, the void uh, if you're playing in zone. He's been a problem. His league's had a lot of productivity. Uh, when he was out in Oakland, obviously in Dallas. Um, uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, you know, he's playing, he's consistent. 
they're guys like our receivers. They enjoy blocking. And you see it show up on tape. They got some speed uh, with Schwartz. I mean, they're they got a good football team. Uh, the tight ends in Joku. Yeah, he's a he's a threat. Really good vertical route runner. Uh, it could be a problem if he gets going. They do a good job. Uh, Again, matching their tight ends, whether they get in their, their extra lineman package. And then with Harrison Bryant, they're very productive. And they use their tight ends really well. Like I said, they, they shift in motion. And they do it with a purpose. They don't do it because, um, you yeah, know, somebody said it looks cool and that's the trend and they have no rhyme or reason why they do it. They do it with a purpose. Bill Callahan's a damn good football coach. They got a good run scheme. And they're going to try to find every way to do it, and do it with a purpose and find an advantage. And they play, you know, philosophically, they're coming to mash you. I know what Jack's all about. Uh, one of the toughest guys I've ever coached. Uh, got all the respect in the world for Jack Conklin. They get in there, wire teller. He's a tough player, postage, smart, big, physical. Talk about Joel Bittonio and, and, and Willis. I mean, they, they play the right way. And Marcus, is, um, the ball handling, is that? Um, it's a combination of both. You know, there's a lot to go into it. I'm not going to get into schemes. But at the end of the day, you know, there's a responsibility when you're the quarterback to make sure things are, are, are right. And that's a job description. But a lot of times, there's other factors that go into it. I was going to ask, was it, um, you know, the rush, two years layoff, he, you know, he hadn't been out there in a while. I don't necessarily do that. I think a lot of times we need to continue to improve and stuff we need to work on in practice to make sure that no matter who's back there, when you're, when you're going to ask people to do stuff and you're going to give them options on a play, that, mm -hmm. that we had a consistency. Because what can happen is just a small, minute detail, it can be catastrophic. And so we got to do make sure we're cleaning that up. Sometimes, yeah, that's a pretty good way to put it. Sometimes you don't enjoy the wins more than it is a relief, but that's what we signed up for. Um, well, what you really want is, is the same thing. Like, there's not more, there's not, you don't have moral victories. You see progress, but at the end of the day, the result that matters is winning. Whatever the stat is, uh, you can make up some fancy acronym. You guys can plug the numbers, but at the end of the day, the one stat that matters is wins and losses in this, in this league. It doesn't mean you're not checking and being aware and where you're trending and, and using it the right way, but we understand that. So it was good for us to break through, uh, but that's over. Like I said, we got a unique challenge coming here Sunday. Have you seen a discernible difference in your players, the way they're walking around, just because you guys weren't wearing it your last game at all? No, I'll make sure we, we have perspective, Jeff. I mean, that's human. As I said, I'll always make sure we have the right perspective. Because, again, it's like human nature. You're right. It's never as bad as it. If everybody thinks when you're, you think that you're down. Right, and everybody's gonna, and then when you win, then you don't all of a sudden have it all figured out. That's a long climb, that's a journey. Just like what they're talking about September is gonna look a lot different towards the end of this year. And so we just want, hopefully, we're stacking wins and, and getting better as a team. Because this team's gonna look, it always happens, whether it's injuries or just things, their natural evolution, this team will look different by the end of the year. And it needs to be trending that way. Is Cleveland the type of team, just with the way that they're constructed, that it, they maybe don't like? You, it's better for you if you're up on them late, because like some teams, they can come, you know, quick strike you really quick late in the game. Where Cleveland, with the way they're constructed, maybe no, they got good players. Look, you know, then they, you know, they have a style they want to play, and then they, they have gotten the lead and, and done a pretty good job. But then they can put you and slow the game down when you're limited to possessions. But every, everybody in this league, it, you got to go one in two minutes. They're usually going to come down to that. And so if you can't consistently do that, then you're going to have a problem. 